Well, well, well. How does that famous saying goes? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, I guess in my case it would be more appropriate to say who doesn't die will show up again. In this case, who will be me? Now, why am I saying this? Well, if you're new here, bienvenue and enjoy your stay. And probably all of these will sound like utter nonsense to you. But, as all my aficionados will well know, as I was ending the first season of DMB in May, or June, I don't really remember, I announced a brief two-week break where I would organise my thoughts and come back more beautiful, more juicier, more whatever than ever. But alas, two weeks became three months. I gained ten kilograms, which is totally not relevant, but I thought I should share with you. And my mental health isn't in the best place at the moment. However, if you know me, even just a tad little bit, you know I don't like to go down without putting up a good fight. So we're back, rounder, plumpier and fiercer than ever, and with a massive appetite. I really hope this will be nice and short, just like me, because I am really craving my dinner right now. Now... Before getting down and dirty, as you'll like it, if it's your first time here on DMB, hi, this is Dungeon and Boys Love. And what is Dungeon and Boys Love, you might ask? I am glad you asked. This is the podcast where your friendly neighbor Fujidanshi, aka Beautiful Me, sits down once a week to talk about one particular beer story and all that revolves around it. Now, if you don't know what a BL is, a BL is a story where a male and another male do have some affectionate intercourse in the meantime. So if you don't like all of that, goodbye. I hope you liked your stay up until now. You can go to listen to somebody else's podcast because we don't appreciate people that make a fuss around here. Thank you very, very much. Now back into the business. If you slightly remember season one, I hope you do, you will recall that I used to talk about two titles while comparing the characters, the story and the art styles. I'll try to change the format a tad bit by talking about only one title, but a little bit deeper, rather than two, but in a more way. You know what I mean. But because you are my lovely audience, and the audience it is my utter priority, please let me know if you prefer the old ways, and I'll just reach it back. How will I do it? I don't know. But if there's a will, there's a way, and I mean, I will find it for sure. Now that all the technicalities are out of the way, thank God, and the comeback speech is dealt and done with, we can start. But before we do that, disclaimer. This episode and content is intended for mature audiences only. It can contain strong language, sexual references, and mentions of violence. Listener discretion is advised. <clears throat> I love my disclaimer. I love my disclaimer moment so much. <clears throat> when I started planning for season two, I found myself in a bit of a pickle, as usual. <laughs> I know, but I mean, I found myself in a bit of a pickle as to with which title I should open the dances, so to speak. If you're familiar with live shows and their outlines, you should know that there's nothing more important than the opening and the ending acts. And from one fellow Fujodanshi to another, at this point there are so many good, and let's underline that, good webtoons, and it's near, like, it's really impossible to choose the perfect one. But then, one night of a full moon, when my period was on, it struck me, because this was pure witchcraft. I mean, it's been a while, we need a bang with all the capital letters, and there it was. And this one is probably one of the best BL webtoons of all times for its story, art and relatability combined. I don't know if relatability is a word, but if you know the word relatable, you know what the fuck I'm trying to talk about. Now, I'm so obsessed with this webtoon that I've been checking for an update from season two, probably every day of the week. In fact, I am so obsessed with this title that I started reading the web novel it's been based from. And don't worry, this is not just me going completely mental. Apparently, whoever came across it, it's in the exact same situation. So, just so you know, make sure you are 100% confident to embark on this journey because you'll probably feel the same way and you'll probably regret that. So, 
I am sorry, but I am not sorry at the same time. You are an adult, you can decide for whatever you want to do. It's your life. But just putting it out there, it's beautiful. So embark on the journey and go mental with all of us. Ladies, gentlemen, and all of the other beautifully non-conforming folks around here. A round of applause for... Drum roll. That's not really a drum roll, but you get the gist of it. Semantic error. And without further ado, for your ears delight only, DMB Season 2, Episode 1, fucking finally, Semantic Error, where you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. I know, I probably used this title once more in Season 1, and it's not really the best title, but bear with me, I couldn't find anything better, the episode will put up for it, okay? Don't fucking complain. And now... The moment all the aficionados have been waiting for. For a minute. The jingle. Cover your ears. It's gonna be intense. I know. You thought. Three months. The beach probably found a tune to put in there. Well, guys. No. I'm sorry. So. Here it goes. In three, two, one. And this is the moment where the jingle should be. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Oh, this jingle. It's amazing. Best thing in the world. And I cannot sing to save my life. So three, two, one. We're back for season two. Woohoo! Now let's get down to business, shall we? First and foremost, before getting into the juicy stuff I know you all little orny bees are waiting for, I would like to talk about something which I won't dig too into too exhaustively as I am not educated enough to do so, but I believe it's something it's important to point out. The thing is, one of the two main characters, well in this case Cho sang Wu, because we're gonna name names in a moment, <laughs> uh, is one of the two main characters of the story and he's in the spectrum. But compared to other stories that I read throughout the years, his portrait is never done, not once, in a pitiful or patronizing or ridiculing way. On the contrary, it is not only extremely respectful, but detailed in a way in which you can see the author has done their research on the topic. And you know, when an author does their research, I always appreciate that, especially on something so delicate, such as something like that. And I really, really hope this is only going to be the beginning of stories where every kind of character is portrayed. I mean, humankind is beautiful because each and every one of us is different and it's time to, well, normalize past the term for lack of a better term. But, you know, English is not my first language. So sometimes I get a bit tongue twisted and I don't know how to say the stuff, but you get what I mean. And I mean... We are all different, we have our flaws, our conditions, whatever, and that's all that makes us, in fact, humans, and we are tired to see perfect characters that have no flaws whatsoever. We want to relate to the stories, so I just hope this is only the beginning to a way which I really like very, very much. Just one thing, authors, do your researches before writing about stuff, because sometimes it gets very, very annoying. Thank you. Okay, now that the National Geographic moment is done, let's give you a bit more context so we are all on the same page, so to speak. <clears throat> the year. Well, potentially I would say before the pandemic, since no one is wearing a face mask, at least inside the buildings. And the place, of course, South Korea, in Seoul, where we lay our scene. Our opening act sees computer science major student Cho sang Woo delivering a group project in front of his classmates. Nothing strange in that, apparently, except that when he shows the project credits, his name is the only one appearing. You see, our lovely Sangoyer is a stickler to rules and despises free riders such as those, uh, those ones that were supposed to work with him. Well, little did he know, however, <laughs> that his action would prevent his senior Jiayun Jiang to graduate, which would be an information of no importance to him except that they'll see each other once again and sooner than expected. Because, as you may know, if you read Semantic Error, sang is not only a computer science student, but also a freaking genius at coding. And 
speaking of the latter, is in the middle of a project when his designer abandons him with the promise of finding an even better designer. And who would be the new devilishly handsome designer we were talking about? That's right, that same Jan Jae Young that had to push his graduation because of Sangu and that group project we were talking about seconds ago. And as you can imagine, things aren't exactly peachy in the beginning, with Jae Young trying to do everything in order to destabilize Sangu and get under his skin and imprint in his brain like a semantic error. However, you know as well as I do that being frenemies is always the best pathway to become lovers, and with Sangu discovering a new let's say, spectrum of emotion he never thought he would, um, we're certainly in for a nice ride. And on a little side note, I don't blame him. If I had a dick and had Jan Jae Young in front of me, I would get hard, no question asked. Yes. Well, and yeah, this wasn't really a major spoiler because, come on guys, you know how BL, BL stories go. Come on, all right? And now I rest my case. Carrying on, for all you thirsty haunt dogs out there, I don't want to burst your bubbles, but if you're here for the dirty, 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 dirty business, you're not going to get any. Let me rephrase that. There will be dirty business, apparently. There will be plenty of it. But we're in a bit of a slow burn kind of pace at the moment. So yeah, most of the stuff is fairly innocent and dare I say, extremely cute. And let's be honest here, I am deeply appreciating that. Now, don't get the peaches and the forks, and don't get me wrong, you know me by now. I'm all for the dirty and the juicy and the snappy and the... From chapter one. However, most of the times that's a bit far-fetched from reality. In here, for example, we have Zhang Jae-yung. I like to say that. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but... Well, Zhang Jae-yung, who's always been free and honest about his relationships and intercourses and sexuality, but in opposition we have Sang Hu, who believes that some stuff are just for the person you will get married to, so not exactly the kind of person that will jump on you from day one. By the way, the moment where he says that his first love was a toy crane was one of my favorites of the entire season. But yeah, you see, he fell in love with a crane, so he's not exactly your sexy sexy material from the first date you need to cook up the guy a little bit but we're getting there and it's gonna get tasty so let's be patient for a second let's all be patient and get on our knees and pray it's gonna happen soon so yeah as i was saying i can't wait for them to get all over each other and yeah as you can hear from my voice I'm getting a bit impatient as well but I wouldn't have it any other way and I will always say that let's be patient I wouldn't have it any other way amen <sighs> that level of innocence it just makes me blush every time mm. well not that I'm blushing as hard as Sangu when he starts realizing his feelings but still I'm blushing pretty hard and I mean, considering that it all starts with Jae Young tormenting the poor Sang Bu uh, the way that they will fall hard for each other is pretty impressive. Not to brag, but Jae Young gets hard by Sang Bu calling him Hyung. So, if that's not hard, my friends, I don't know what is. And I mean, they used to hate each other and they are kind of not getting there yet, so, I mean... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just so obsessed with it. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying no more. But carrying on and going a little bit back, let me tell you the art style. The art style is phenomenal. Let's say that one more time. Phenomenal in portraying their story from the original feud to the love story. It's chef's kiss. The contrast between Sangu's color palette, which is like pale skin, always wearing black, green eyes, generally trying to fade in the crowd sort of character, and Jae Young's palette is to die for. Be right. Sorry, I forgot to mention that before. Jae Young is named Semantic Error by Sangu because as a semantic error, he is difficult to erase and imprint himself everywhere. And how does he imprint himself everywhere, you might ask? Back to the color palette. He always wears those bright colors, particularly red, that Sangu despises so much. 
and I know I am explaining it in kind of a bad way, but if you read the webtoon, you know what I'm trying to say. And I mean, my English is not that bad, so you should be able to, like, realize what I'm trying to say. If not, call my lawyers, they will explain it for me. Going back, the visuals. Beautiful. Beautiful. As much beautiful as the character design, dare I say, because let me tell you that, the boys are eye candy, like proper ones. I want to be in that webtoon so badly, except that I am not a guy, so I wouldn't get any, but still, I would be pretty impressive. And I know what you might say, but then why you call the episode you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, where clearly we have a good cover and a good content on top of it all? Well, that is really simple, my peeps, in my opinion. With Jayung, we need to get into it a bit deeper in order to realize that he's not just that cocky, gorgeous Sunbei with many talents and a bit of a lack of empathy, but also a very gentle soul that wants to be loved and cared for. And as for Sangwoo, who everyone thinks as a machine with complete lack of emotions, we need to dig in order to realize that not all people feel the emotions in the same way, but with a bit of empathy and kindness, we can understand and reach out to them and care for them. So be kind people, let's just listen to each other and everything will be better and the world will be a better place and not the shitty place that we live in at the moment. Sorry, I am very nervous. I went back to work and it's stressing me out. <sighs> but going back to our lovely, beautiful boys, now that we realized all of this, please... Boys, get into bed already. The sexual tension between you two is killing me. And with this, my beautiful creatures, and I'm talking to you, my beautiful audience, not to the boys, we mark the ending of the first episode of the second season of DMB. Please let me know if you like the new format. I hope you had a good time with me today, as per usual. I sure am super happy to be back in the loop, even though I tongue-twisted myself like... 20 gazillion times and I sound pretty disgusting but you know three months break it's pretty long I don't know what the fuck I'm doing no more but as I always used to say we are here and we deliver every fucking time and as usual I will thank you so much for sticking with me until the end of the episode from the bottom of my heart and if you're following me from season one thank you for still being here I love you and appreciate you each and every one of you and you are very brave. Thank you ever so much. And, well, yeah. What can I say? I am sweating like a pig. I need to take a shower. Again. So I will cut it here now. Don't miss me too much. Stay hydrated. Don't be too horny. Your heart ancestors are watching you. Just so you know. All the ghosts are around you. They are watching you. And they are making a mockery out of you guys. So, don't do it too much think about me, I will think about you. And I shall see you next Wednesday, hopefully in a better shape, but always fabulous. Enjoy.